What's going on YouTube? This is ParkerLad88 coming at you with another video. Today I've got a discussion for you guys talking about the happenings of YCS Atlanta, which just concluded not too long ago. So, it seems like creativity has been kind of a hot button in Yu-Gi-Oh! As, as of the results of uh, YCS Atlanta that just concluded. Um, so I just want to go ahead and talk about that. I want to talk about creativity, I want to talk about innovation, what you guys, and what you guys think about it. So let's go ahead and start with where this discussion is coming from. We're going to do a little bit of backstory here, boys and girls. So basically, after the conclusion of YCS Atlanta, maybe like a day or so afterwards, I'm not sure, the grand fearless leader of Team 3 Summons, Shadowfox4562, aka the Synchro user of our team, he was gracious enough in order to give us a nice little pie chart breakdown of what happened in uh, YCS Atlanta. Uh, I'll go ahead and pull it up for you guys right here. This is it right here. Um, as you can see, let me go ahead and widen it out for you guys. Um, I just want to see, uh, show you this, just to show you that there was a lot of Zodiac that talked at that event. But of course, frogs were the ones who ended up winning, which was, you know, really cool. So, one of the comments that was posted, you know, to that chart was, you know, Zoo were ruining the game, there's no variety anymore, and then that led into a series of posts basically debating whether, you know, Zodiac have ruined that, whether they haven't, so on and so forth. This eventually led to a video by our same fearless leader, you know, addressing that. And the main points that he kind of brought up from that, what I could tell from the video, was number one, you don't need Zoo in order to win. But that's not what we're talking about. I mean, that's obvious. Frogs won YCS Atlanta. And the other one is that the acts are fair, which I can't completely co-sign on, and that they are, you know, they allow for innovation and creativity and stuff like that. And then, you know, the supporting evidence for that was, you know, all of the, the variants of Zodiac. Um, so I think we should go ahead and start talking about it. And I think the very first thing that we need to do is probably define what we what we want for creativity and innovation to be. So I went ahead and went online and looked up some definitions for innovation and creativity. So the definition here for innovate, <clears throat> actually let's start with the definition of creativity. So the definition of creativity by Google is the use of imagination or original ideas, especially in the production of artistic work, but we're talking about card games. Um, so not artistic work. And then we have the definition of innovation, which here for MaryWester.com is to do something in a new way or to have new ideas about something that can be done. An example of this would be, for instance, using Teratop and Decaton Borg in order to make rank threes when they're supposed to be used for making synchros, um, more specifically in its own archetype. Another example of this would be using Brilliant Fusion and Seraph Knight in order to get an extra normal summon, which changed the way that Monarchs were played. Um, examples of creativity um, would be like, you know, the creation of Dino Rabbit, you know, seeing how these decks work together, like how these cards work together to come up with a deck that turned out to be one of the best decks in this format. Another example that I like to use until my dear friend Neo Dark Guy, aka the Underboss, aka the Left Hand of Team 3 Summons, told me that the OCG did it first, but until that point, I thought I came up with it off the top of my head. You have Lord of the Red, a level 8 ritual, and probably my favorite Red Eyes based monster that I really wanted to play, you know, was like, hey, I can use, I can toss the Dragon Ball, which is a heretic monster, I can put heretics in there, don't make great gates because when you tribute them, you get, you know, special summon dragons from your graveyard, which you used for your, which you used, um, you sent with your advanced ritual art, and, you know, you kind of just got a deck out of that. That'd be something like creativity if the OCG hadn't figured it out first. <clears throat> So that's what I think it is. If you guys have defini different definitions, feel free to let me know. I think one thing that probably would have made the argument, I guess, a little clearer is if there were firm definitions. Because when you look at my friend Joseph versus Shadowfox4562, Joseph is clearer. It seems that he's saying that there, there weren't a lot of different decks anymore because of Zodiac. 
and then you have Neo Dark, uh, not Neo Dark Eye, Shadow Fox 562 going like, hey, look at all these variants, look at these different decks. And they're not really different decks, they're just variations on one deck, so to speak. Or maybe, like, you just have two decks together that really have no inherent, you know, interactions together. So, now that we're done talking about the backstory, now that we actually have our definitions in place, let's go ahead and look at some of these deck profiles that we can actually use as evidence. The reason why I'm doing this is because one of the comments by my dear friend Neo Dark Guy was that he felt the argument was a little subjective. It's still going to be kind of subjective, but I've at least tried to get some assorted deck profiles of these Kaiju variants to see if these people are truly being creative with their, you know, Zodiac variants and whatnot. We can argue that because, in my opinion, I'm not really thinking so. But let's go ahead and look at some of these. First, we're going to start off with our pure Zodiac, not much to say about that. We've got our Decay Tom Borg and Terratop Engine to make rank of Ogre. We have the three Rats here, the three Whip Tail, and the two Thorough Blades, the standard. We have, like, you know, a bunch of deterrents, Surgers, and whatnot, really powerful traps, and then the basic extra deck right here. So I'll go ahead and let you guys take a look at that for a minute. And, you know, up to this point, I'm sure a lot of you guys know what Zodiac do. A lot of their plays focus around summoning rap gear, using that effect over and over again so you can crank out rank fours and then recycling them all with emerald in order to do it all over again. <clears throat> and then sitting behind your traps. It's like putting that up, putting Drancia up after that, and then basically trying to get as much stuff to play during your opponent's turn as possible. You know, it's just what Zodiac do. Uh, let's take a look at some of these other brands. I want to start with this Kaiju Zodiac build. So, I don't really think that this deck is creative because you have, it, I mean, it's literally just the Zodiac and Kaiju together. They don't really play off of each other's strengths or anything like that. The reason why people use um, Interrupted Kaiju Slumber in this game is, at least for Zodiac, is to and be an even greater enabler of OTKs. Because one thing that Kaijus are very susceptible, I mean, not Kaijus, Zodiacs are very susceptible to are mass removal. So you activate in order to Kaiju Slumber, you get a big feeder on board, and then you just kind of go off with your plays from there. You clear the board, put feeders on, and then you just go ahead and swing. So looking at this, you have your standard Zodiac ink engine where you have two small Kaiju, two big Kaiju, and then from there it's just Zodiacs being Zodiacs. In order to Kaiju Slumbers and a bunch of traps. Not not really too much different. It's just you have big monsters to clear stuff with and whatnot. And then pretty much the exact same, you know, extra deck. Let's move on to something that I do think is more creative, which is in contrast to that, which is Zodiac Shadow Burst Abyss. Now, I, I don't think, I still don't think Zodiacs have like brought these decks back to the brink or made them relevant or anything like that. It's just them doing video. That being said, though, this has a little bit more synergy, and this I would kind of, I would classify as being more so innovative or creative, whichever one you want to use. You have your Burning Abyss monsters, which you can overlay in order to make your Invoker, or in order to make Dante, you know, you can overlay for Invoker in order to, um, you know, go for your Rat Pier and go that route. Um, Shadals are naturally synergistic because all of their fusions are elemental based, so you can, you know, um, after you're done going off with your plays, you can use Shadal Fusion in order to make your Shikinaga so you can, um, you know, have a, a harder lock than just having Drancia in back row. It's a more solid lock. And then, since the game's kind of extra deck heavy right now, you can also use Shadal Fusion in order to dump resources from your deck in order to get extra pluses that way, and then you can also just toss Winda on board in order to prevent special by your opponent. So this is a little bit more, teeny tiny bit more synergistic. The Shadals actually kind of allow these decks to work together to a degree, while still being able to function as easy their own. So that's a pretty good example. Let's go for a middle ground like Artifact Kaiju Zodiacs. This I believe has absolutely, it's just, it's like all the other Zodiac variants that I feel, where it's just the deck, the normal deck, which I guess in this case would just be Kaiju Artifacts, you throw Zoo in it because Zoo gives you quick advantage. There's really no nothing working together here. Like, you have two sites, two Artifacts Sanctum, you use that for control, nothing really there. You've got the basic engine with the Kaiju and the Interrupted Kaiju Slumber, nothing nothing really great there, and you have the Zodiac engine. Those, deck, those, those things don't really work together 
but they, they do what they need to do. The artifact sanctums block your opponent out. Kaiju lets you enable, lets you enable the OTK, and then Zodiac Zoo. Zoo's gonna zoo. But somebody hashtag that. Zodiac's gonna Zoo's gonna zoo. And then, you know, standard extra deck, you know. This is interesting. Uh, Croctocook. That's actually pretty interesting. I don't know what that does or what they do with that, but hey. Like I said, I think this is like a middle ground as far as, like, creativity, but not really. A lot of what I'm seeing in these decks is in combination with, you know, the other ones from the top 32 chart, where you just have the Zodiacs in combination with whatever deck they play, and they just use Zodiac's ability to gain lots of advantage really quick in combination with just the decks doing what they do. I don't think it makes these decks better, like, let's say, a Lunalite Zodiac variant, where it's like, you have Lunalite that can function on their own, you have Zodiac, which can function on their own, but you have, like, Broad Bull, who can search you all the pieces, and the main deck is still Lunalite, so it's just you have the Zodiac to supplement that. This is just that. Anyway, if you look at both Shadow Foxes and Joseph's arguments, technically you could argue that they're kind of both right. From Joseph's perspective, when he says there's not a lot of variation as a result of Zodiac, he's um, saying that you really don't get a lot of different decks. Like, for instance, you're not seeing Zodiac and then, like, Lumalites and, um, like, Speedroids or just whatever. I'm, I'm giving bad examples, but you're basically not seeing different decks, different archetypes played. So technically, he's not wrong. If you look at it from Shadow Fox, Fox's perspective, we have lots of different variants. There's lots of different decks in that way. Variations on the same deck. So technically, he's not wrong either. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? I personally think that ZDX don't really do much as far as variation for the game. These, these decks aren't innovative. These decks aren't really creative. All, all, not all of them are. I think like a, a majority of them are, are not particularly creative, as we've seen by some of these uh, deck lists. They don't really do anything to make the decks synergize so they actually work together. They're just using Zodiac as an engine to help them gain lots of advantage. Um, that being said, what do you guys think? Um, do you have different, different definitions of creativity and innovation? Do you think these decks are creative and innovative? You know, I'd love to hear what your guys' comments are. Um, you know, let me know if there's anything I can do to add to this discussion or make discussions in the future. That'll do it for now. This is Parker Lad. Out.